All right, everybody, it's time to talk all things New York Jets with a very special guest. We got the season opener coming around the corner in just a handful of days. New York Jets, Buffalo Bills. It's time to get into it, baby. Let's turn up. It is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Garniers. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is on the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gastard Sycamore, baby. For me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you, man. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I've, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. What's poppin' everybody? My name is Paul Eston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for HeavyGashDarn.com. Welcome to the program, and for the second time joining us here on the show, we must be doing something right, baby. Let's bring him in. Thomas Gashdarn Morstead, the New York Jets punter, and he's here on the program. Thomas, what's popping, baby? How are we? Doing great. How about you? I'm fired up, Thomas. I'm going to be I honest. Can, I'm I can tell. For, I can yeah, feel I'm it. I'm fired up for multiple reasons. So here it is. Let me throw this on the screen. I need you to walk me through this because you threw this up on the social media. Okay. Uh, let's throw this up. This is beautiful because I'm going to be honest. Uh, you're a better man than me as uh, we see this on the screen here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I ran into one of these at the New York State Fair. We're here in New York. And I saw it and said, hmm, I will watch other people attempt this challenge. But, Thomas, you saw this challenge here that uh, people are uh, watching on the screen here. And I'll throw it up so they can watch a little bit of the video of you holding yourself up, pull-up style, for over two minutes. I mean, Thomas, walk me through this. What happened? You saw this and you went, yeah, baby, I'm a competitor. We're doing this thing. Like, what happened here? Walk us through. Um, yeah, we, we had a few days off this weekend and took the kids over to uh, Kalahari Resort in, um, in the Poconos area, uh, just over the Jersey, Pennsylvania state line. And um, just wanted to make the weekend about the kids. And we had a great time. Um, water slides and, you know, arcades. That's where this mm-hmm. was. Um, and yeah, I was, it was staring at me the whole, the whole weekend I was there. I really wanted to try it. And, uh, it said, if you made it to, uh, over the two fifteen mark that you would, you know, you'd win a hundred dollars in arcade credits. And I thought, you know, that'd be about like as legendary thing a dad could do for their kids is win them a hundred dollars yeah. in uh, tokens. So, um, anyways, I, I gave it a shot watched a few other people, uh, try and, and fail and, uh, you know, got my strategy together and, and, uh, was able to get it done. Let me ask you, Thomas, have you done this sort of thing before? Have you ever (laughs) attempted this? No, no, but I, you know, I'm kind of uh, a little bit of a gym rat and, uh, pull-ups are kind of my thing. So I thought, you know, maybe I'd have a chance at it. And, uh, you know, I, I knew I would do something respectable, but I didn't know if I could, if I could, uh, you know, these carnival games can be a little tricky, you know, you know, so I was, uh, I wasn't certain that I would get it done, but, uh, I was excited to give it a shot. And, and let me make this clear in your caption. You said that, uh, that bar was pretty greased up. So th- th- there was some extracurricular activities happening there. Is that yeah. Right? When, when they lowered the bar, uh, there was two things that made it tricky. Number one, it definitely felt like it was greased up. And so I, I got my shirt and right. You don't see it in the video, but I, uh, when they lowered it down for me, I kind of got my shirt, lifted it up there and tried to like wipe it clean, uh, which helped a little bit. Um, and then the second thing I do, I did, which, 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 you know, you could argue is cheating. Uh, I didn't hold my hands in the same direction. I had one overhand grip, one under so that the natural, it was a free rotating bar. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a static bar. So, um, by having a kind of a one grip one way and one the other way, they kind of like balance each other out to where I wasn't having an issue with that. So, And Thomas, you said you're a pull-up guy. Like, like that's kind of your thing. Like, I, I don't know if you have records off the top of your head, but, like, how many pull-ups do you think you could do? If if right now we just walked over to the pull-up bar, how, how many is Thomas pounding out here? 
Um, I don't know. Um, I haven't like peaked myself out before. Um, not on a single set, but I mean, you know, I, I can hit, um, you know, a set of three with 140 pounds hanging on me. Um, wow. Um, you know, I did a set of eight yesterday with 70 pounds off of me. So, you know, I feel pretty proficient in it. And, um, um, yeah, it's just, I've always enjoyed doing pull-ups. So, um, so yeah. All right. I, again, I haven't gotten to that level, Thomas. You, you said it's almost even worth more than the arcane coins. Obviously, at the end of the video that people can see on social media, your kids come running to you like at the end of a football game or something that you uh, you had just won. So my daughter uh, is just a year and a half. So I haven't had any of these moments yet. But but I'm taking notes. I, I saw what you did. And I'm like, OK, I just need to get brownie points with the kids, do kind of things that would impress them, which, you know, kind of you know, kind of quells that same thing for me of like some level of sense of achievement. So I've been taking notes, Thomas. I, I just want you yeah. to know that. No, I think it's good. And, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it was, that was kind of a glorious uh, thing to do in front of your kids, you know, so it's not, uh, it doesn't always end up like that. Right. But I think the more important thing is, is trying new things in front of your kids and being vulnerable. And sometimes you may screw up or you may look, you know, kind of pathetic and that's okay too. You know, it's, it's getting them an energy of not being afraid to fail is uh, kind of my big thing. Well, well, I love that. Again, we're speaking with Thomas Goss, darn Morstead here, the New York Jets punter here on the program. And Thomas, I could have you on for any reason, but I'm going to be honest. One of the reasons I set this up is the initial 53 man roster comes out <laughs> and you're not on it. Jet fans were freaking out on social media. And I freaked out for a second. Then I said, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Take a step back. I said, wow. Thomas Morstead just did an incredibly selfless thing with what he did. And, you know, not to get into all the particulars, because obviously, you know, the rules of the NFL, but for our viewers that may not the vested veteran versus non vested veteran thing and players potentially having to go through waivers by you being on the ax temporarily to come back that allowed the jet some wiggle room to make a lot of, you know, formality NFL roster moves. If you didn't do that, there was a chance the jets could have lost a young guy. They really like. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to um, comment on, you know, what their intentions were because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But I, I was fairly I was fairly confident that I was going to get signed back. And, um, you know, yeah, there's there's all sorts of um, rigmarole that that goes on. Um, you know, basically the intent behind the rule is if if you have a kid that's is is not vested in the league. So he's three years or less. And. You know, they'd like to maybe he's hurt, but they don't want to lose him for the year. Um, if they if they don't keep him on the roster, um, they have to waive him injured and another team can claim him. And, um, you know, that's not a good deal. But it also it, it if teams were allowed to do that all the time, then every team would IR 10 rookies every year, hoping to hold right. them hold their rights for another year and kind of to stop that happening too. So, yeah, I think there's definitely, uh, you know, an advantage to being a vested guy and, and, uh, being somebody that the team trusts and, um, you know, um, you know, I won't say any more about it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, feel free to just squat away any of these questions. I, I just feel yeah. uh, intrigued by it that like, you know, Thomas, it's not just trust from the jet side. I mean, it's from your side. It's on both sides. How I understand it. The team is yeah, saying, sure. Hey, we're going to do, we're going to put you aside to go do these things. And we promise we got you. And then you on the other side, you're willing to step back. And then also your problem is that, Hey, I'm not going to some other team that comes up and says, Hey, Thomas, here's insert, insert, insert. I promise to come back too. So it takes trust from both sides for that to work. Absolutely. Uh, a few other teams did call. So, Ooh, and you yeah. said, and, and, and Thomas, you said, Hey, Hey, I, I, you know, was it, I made a promise to the jets basically. And Hey, I, I'm going back or are you a loyalty guy? What, what was it that made you say no? Cause uh, yeah, again, I, you perform very well this off season, obviously. Um, yeah, look, I'm, uh, you know, I'm committed to being here and, um, I felt pretty strongly that, that they were going to sign me back. And, uh, like I said, I won't comment anymore on it because I don't want to get anybody, you know, I don't, I don't know what, what, what I could or couldn't say that could get anybody in trouble. So I'm just glad to be here. Okay. I, I will ask one more question again, feel free to swat it away, but I'm just curious. When did the Jets approach you about potentially doing this? Because again, I didn't, when you were initially cut, again, Jet fans are freaking out. And I took a step back and said, holy crap. I mean, man, that's incredibly smart by both sides, potentially again, to, to put the Jets in a good position. 
when did they approach you about this? At what point in this off season? Um, yeah, it was not like a, you know, uh, a long heads up on it. It was, um, you know, they just told me that's what they were going to do. And, um, you know, that's what they did. So, okay. Yeah. Again, feel free to just not answer any of these. It's okay. Um, and, and from your side, I would imagine that, and again, I'm trying to get in the mind of an NFL player. Okay. I looked down at my dad, but I realized that is <clears> never going to happen. So I'm vicariously living through you here, but like, you know, some people just don't want to be cut. So like how open were you to doing this? Cause it helps out the team, but obviously there's also the chance that the jets or any team for that matter, wouldn't live up to their word on the other side as well, obviously. So there's a level of risk. Yeah. Look, uh, life's risky. So, um, like I said, they're not going to comment on any sort of communication that the team had with me or not. I got cut and I signed back and uh, I'm glad to be here. And I got to just say, I love your social media action, Thomas. So some people have people that do these kind of things. I can feel in every tweet that you ever do that it's you. And I just got to say, Jet fans loved both the immediate Aaron Rodgers relax and then the follow up. I'm not going anywhere, baby. And Jet fans yeah. lost their mind. So uh, there seems to be a really great connection between you and the fans. Well, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully that continues because of, um, you know, consistent, solid play. Um, it is fun to kind of, it is a, it's a unique way of connecting with, with people, um, uh, the social media age and everybody uses it in a different way. Um, but I think, you know, I think fans, you know, appreciate and, um, like seeing kind of, you know, regular people, uh, or at least see that guys are just regular people and, uh, getting to know them and it's just it's it's a cool thing if you use it in the right way let me throw this other post up again for people that are watching they'll be able to uh, see this thomas <laughs> you sent out this message uh on twitter and you said this and this was a couple days ago but quote if we win the storyline will be that we're a lock to win the super bowl in february if we lose the storyline will be that the following week's game is must win or our season's over it's important to note that none of these are actually true and staying uh, process focused regardless of outcome will take us as far as possible can't wait for monday night football is that something that has to be said in the locker room or is that something that's kind of accepted because regardless that you've said that obviously people are going to be overreacting anyway on that tuesday yeah, that wasn't so much to my two fans. That was more you know, of, of a new age way of communicating with younger teammates. I know that um, guys follow each other and see what they're posting and what they're up to. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's um, instead of lecturing a young player on what's to come and getting too far out in front, it's just understanding that, you know, there's kind of two ways that this goes um, on Monday, win or loss. And, um, and the stories that'll come from that and just being prepared for what comes the, the, you know, landslide of either carnival or crisis that comes from the, you know, fans and, and media in particular, um, it's good to know that that's coming one way or the other, you're going to be fed a bunch of bullshit. And, um, you know, it's at the end of the day, none of it matters. And, you know, whether we win or lose, we've got to be, focus on our process and you know if everybody just keeps their feet on the ground the whole season it doesn't get too high it doesn't get too low and just constantly recalibrates and goes back and attacks another week again and does it again and then does it again if you can just keep doing that and stacking them up um having that process will get to the best results over time and give yourself the best chance to do what we want to do Thomas, have you thought about what Monday night football is going to be like? September 11th, Aaron Rodgers, of course, opening game, the Jets opening game of the season against an amazing opponent in the Buffalo Bills. Have you taken your mind to that place? Sure, I have. Um, you know, you've got to, I think, you've got to, you know, there's so many bits and pieces to this game that are um, glorified and sold as what's important and I don't know. I just think you have to kind of remind yourself of being a kid and what would get you excited about being on national TV in front of the whole country um, on 9-11, two New York teams playing in, in New York, uh, you know, to kick off an NFL season. Um, everybody should find reasons to, you know, be grateful for where they're at. And, and um, so I think absolutely we've been thinking about this for a long period of time and it's very exciting and I think we've 
collectively done the work to uh, give ourselves a chance to be successful. And, um, you know, you'd be guys, I don't care what part of your career and you'd be killing your killing to even have a chance to do something like this. It's, it's amazing. So, um, I think it's very healthy to, to think about that. And, um, it should be an awesome energetic environment. All right. A couple of quick points before we get you out of here. First off, I proclaim, I'm self-proclaimed the most optimistic Jets fan on the planet. And I feel so confident that earlier today on Sports Talk Radio, our Buffalo Bills intern, he bet me live on air. If the Jets win, you know, he will dye his hair pink. If the Bills win, I have to dye my hair pink. And uh, I've never dyed my hair in my life, Thomas. So all my eggs are in the proverbial basket, baby, of the Jets like winning it. week one. Yeah, I like it. I'm not a... Uh... Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You, you hear that? I, I don't believe in that. I'm, I'm a big go all in mentality. Yeah. So I respect that. Okay. Thank you, Thomas, for that. And lastly, Hard Knocks, did you love your feature of being in there, <laughs> baby? I, you got a lot of buzz I, on I social media. I tell you media. what, I, I tried to avoid it. And they came to me and said, Hey, you're going to be on Hard Knocks tonight. I said, Why? I haven't interviewed. I've done anything. And they were like, Well, some guys that were mic'd up during the game took notice of your uh your post field goal extra point you know work and uh and you know we've got enough content to run a little piece on it so all right well here we go so i actually i actually watched that episode to uh to see what was you know what was coming um but i thought they did a good job with it and you know i was like god you know people are gonna just think i'm doing this to get on tv and it's like i've been doing this for years and anyways it's all good yeah Okay. Well, amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed that part, Thomas. I always appreciate you taking the time to hop on here. Good luck this season. Jet fan freaking love you, baby. Hopefully we're not seeing a lot of you. That means a lot more touchdowns and things of that nature. But we know if you have to go on the field, you're one of the best in the gosh darn business, baby. So, Thomas, we love it. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. There he is, Thomas Morstead, New York Jets punter. Thanks.